we have left the east behind us and crossed the continental divide over Colorado on our way to what is without a doubt one of my favorite states in the US, Utah. So what are we doing in Utah? Well, we're not just here for the scenery. We had to sling some lead and we touched down in Salt Lake City on a scorching day, 38 degrees Celsius to be exact, with plenty of excitement for the days ahead. So we've landed safe and sound in, in, in Utah and we've headed straight for the uh, the house of Mr. Justin Jacobson, owner of Utah Air Guns. What a fantastic uh, place to be, just hanging out with all these guys that we haven't seen in, in quite a while. Mr. Ken Hicks is here, uh, Chris Turek is here, Ernest Rowe is here, uh, Josh from Pursuit of Accuracy met up with us at the airport and we're expecting other South Africans to arrive any moment. So starting to get dark and starting to cool off nicely but yeah we're gonna chill out this evening just catch up spend some time with each other and tomorrow we're gonna get shooting the other south africans andres from patriot outdoors and Rolf from air tech hunting pulling after a very long flight and we're all a bit tired so it's cameras off for the night and up again early the next morning two very different weather So we finally made it to the beautiful uh, Utah Air Gun Shop. A lot of commotion here this morning. Uh, obviously, when people travel out here, a lot of people ship their guns here. So everyone's sort of come in here to collect the guns that were shipped here and to start setting them up. So we've got the whole crew here uh, buying little bits of accessories and stuff uh, that they need for the competition and just uh, in general hanging out and connecting with the, the staff here at the shop. But yeah, it's, it's like, I feel like a kid in a candy store. I wish I could take a 72 caliber big ball home. Unfortunately, I can't. But uh, yeah, good to be back. What do you do with something this big? I don't understand. You shoot baboons in the face. No, no, no. You shoot, imagine shooting a mossy with this roof. <laughs> yes, it's a little distracting to be in one of the best air gun shops in the country. But the best part of being here wasn't the stuff. It was the people that walked through the door. I haven't seen some of these guys since the days before COVID and there were plenty of hugs and handshakes going around. Outside, the rain was starting to come down. The plan was to do some shooting today, but many of us also needed to set up our competition guns. We headed to one of the rental houses, which was going to be our base of operation for the next few days, and got to work. So we've just pulled into one of the Airbnb houses that we got, which the, the owners very kindly allowed us to shoot at. We've got a 50 yard range just outside, which will be perfect for just getting zeroed and, and all of that stuff. And then we've also got uh, a property next door, as far as I understand, that reaches out a bit further. So this should be fun. Um, it's pouring outside with rain at the moment, so we might have to just hold off on the, on the shooting. But as soon as that stops, we're going to get moving. Well, the neighbor wasn't exactly happy that we were shooting in the backyard. So we changed plans a bit and set up a bit of an informal workshop in the garage to do all of the preparation and gunsmithing stuff and we'd be heading out to the range a little bit later to do the shooting. The guys who had traveled with their own guns really needed to take some time to set stuff up. They basically needed to take stock standard air guns and rip them apart, add their bits and bobs and turn them into whatever they wanted for the competition. Many of us had set up two or three different guns for different disciplines. The slug guns all needed power kits and tungsten hammers which meant stripping everything down to access the internal organs of these machines but that's all part of the fun I guess. One of the best parts about these competitions is the camaraderie and the teamwork. We all shared tools, we shared information and just helped each other set up. There was no form of selfishness on display whatsoever even with the insane prize money at stake. A victory for one would be a victory for all and that way no one would be going home feeling defeated. It's the best mindset to have I think. This is surreal! 
Yeah. You two stood in front of you. Sorry, but it's you two stood in front of me. It's been a little bit. Just one, yeah. two. Uh, there was also plenty of meeting and greeting going on. Because of COVID, many of us who'd been sort of pen pals on WhatsApp over the past few years finally got the chance to meet each other. I met Keith from 68 Whiskey and Josh from Pursuit of Accuracy for the first time. Andres and Hein were here for the first time. And Johan Axelsson was back in Utah for the first time since he cruised to Benchrest Victory back in 2018. While we waited for the rain to move on, we all hung out at the house and pigged out on pizza. Right, sun's out and guns have come out as well. It's turned out to actually be a beautiful day. The clouds have moved off, blue skies now and there's not too much wind. So it's pretty good conditions for zeroing and just trying to figure out a trajectory drop. Obviously you don't want to be doing that when it's blowing with wind because you confuse yourself. But let's take this opportunity to figure out where we're at. Um, we're at about 1,400 meters elevation here. So we will need to do a few changes from Tennessee a few days ago. Um, but I think we'll get to that pretty quickly, so let's go have some fun. I appear to have to go wobbly then. Wobble, wobble, wobble. Okay, Day two in Utah, and with two days to go until we get the competition underway, we wanted to get all our ducks in a row. With the main range being a little bit too crowded and a bit too short for our liking, we made the decision to head somewhere a little bit more remote. Yeah, baby. Right, day two out here in, in Utah, and we're mixing things up just a bit. Yesterday we went out to the range, but it was a little bit formal. You know, we needed the, the range officer there, which required a bit of planning. Um, and obviously, with other shooters there shooting center fires and rim fires and stuff, it was a bit distracting. So today we've come out to the middle of nowhere <laughs> on the side of a mountain. Gives us basically 300 yards to play with, which allows us to sort of validate our trajectories in these conditions out to 200 yards for the PRS, uh, 300 for the big ball, and to just fiddle around at 100 and, and get some experience in the wind with the, with the bench setup. So fantastic to be here, and it's nice to see all these guys again. Uh, Donnie and Yolanda out here, and uh, yeah, a few faces I haven't seen in, 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 in a couple of years. So great weather, and let's make the most of the day. Well guys, I need to show you this. Just shot a couple quick five shot groups at 100. Look at that. Put my thumb next to it so you can see. That's five shots, 100 yards. With a 22 slug gun, pretty happy with that. <laughs> Even more guys pull in, including Giles with the best hat by far. Now it's a party. With my PRS gun set up, I turned my focus towards my bench gun. But alas, I brought the wrong mounts, so my 30 cal big ball gun will be the only one I spend time on today. For the first time ever, FX Impact are going to be able to reach the 140 foot pound requirement for big ball, so 
many of us have opted for the 30 caliber. I'll be shooting prototype 64 grain javelins, but more on this later. <laughs> For dinner tonight, we have opted for some fireworks as we head to a Japanese restaurant for some delicious teppanyaki steak. We end the night on a high with food being thrown around and once again head to bed with smiles on our faces and very full stomachs. So today's the sort of second day we've come out to the, the wilderness here. The bit more activity here because people have now found out about the space. But yesterday I, I took some time to set up my uh, my 22 PRS gun and my big ball gun which are both shooting really well. I didn't have the right mounts to get the scope high enough above the Sabre rail on my 30 cal bench gun. So that's my main focus this morning. Um, it's a really nice setup for the bench. I've got a, a PR Systems... Uh, a uh, butt pad with a bag rider on a GRS uh, sandbag. I've got the Sabre Tactical top rail system with a GRS bar pod and that those two things just give me a really stable platform. So should be pretty good but uh, I think the proof is in the pudding. Let's get some shooting done. Okay, so we got an Impact M3. This is my PRS rifle. So I tried to emulate my other PRS rifles. You'll see we have the Sabre Tactical Top Rail. And I actually put some MDT weights on this. So this rifle weighs in around 20 pounds and it's pretty typical for a PRS rimfire rifle to weigh around that. Helps it settle in. On the bottom we have another Sabre Tactical Rail. This is yet to come out, but this is something you'll see pretty soon on the market. Um, so we have the power block here with a tungsten hammer, the 800 mil barrel. This is an Ernest Rowe custom shroud with an air stripper in it. And on top of here, we have an F3R machine with an Athlon Cronus and an MV3 send it level. And on this side, we have the Ernest Rowe custom handle. Um, that's been really good for PRS, just making things smooth. And we have the KNL buttstock here on the rear with a bag rider. And the reason I use these is because they offer a more traditional bag rider style. And that's kind of what we use in PRS. So I'm sure other people will eventually start making them. But for right now, k l is pretty much the go-to for your PRS style bag rider. So we have their new butt stock here. This is their Gen 3. With all our setup procedures done and dusted, we slowly start making our way towards the main shooting range where registration for RMAC was taking place. I was immediately blown away by just how much the event had grown since I was last year in 2019. It was clear that this was going to be the biggest and best air gun competition yet, and that's a good sign for where the sport is heading. Although I also knew it would mean extra pressure for all the shooters, with the overall skill level definitely being raised a notch. So for dinner tonight, we're doing something different. We don't feel like leaving the house, so we've got a, a food truck that's, that's come here with some Mexican food, which is something that we don't really eat that much of in South Africa, but it's obviously very popular here. So I'm learning all about tacos and burritos and quesadillas and stuff like that. Fun, um, but yeah, just really relaxed by the house tonight. Uh, it's probably about 5.30 p.m. now. And once again, we're gonna probably get an early night because tomorrow is competition day and uh, that's when the, the, the real serious stuff starts. It's been all funny games up until now, but tomorrow, it's going to get serious. There was a pretty relaxed mood overall with many guys just hanging out, but others were doing some last minute prep before the big day. Do you guys want to tell me what you're doing right now? Um, so I'm watching Rick sort pellets, and we're going to, once Rick gets bored, then I'm going to take over, <laughs> and then I'll start sorting pellets. So we're working off the same team, uh, yeah. ten, and uh, we're going to make good work in this arm, Rick. Yes, we are. How much it's actually going to help? We'll see. Yeah, we're down. We're getting as close as we can to 4475. Yeah, there's a lot of great shooters here this year, so every little bit of uh, advantage we can get is yeah. probably going to help. So, 
Shooters like this one. Yeah. <laughs> stuff. I told Frederick, I was like, it's going to be really bad when I beat him with his own rifle. But yeah. <laughs> Rick, when you're not wearing a hat, you really look like Creed from the office, from the side. Hey? My God, dude. From the side. Does it hurt terribly? No, it's not too bad. They have me on a lot of painkillers. Oh, really? What kind? Codeine? Vicodin? Percocet? Fentanyl? Oxycontin? Paladone? I what? have no idea. All right, let's try it. Yeah! In the next episode, we are getting underway with the Rocky Mountain Air Gun Challenge as we take on 100 yard bench rest qualifying. I'll be talking you through the first two days of the competition, which included both qualifying rounds for bench rest and qualifying for the speed challenge. And this year, Nicole and I managed to get a lot more footage of both disciplines. So I'll be able to show you every painstaking detail of what went down. Make sure you subscribed and I hope to see you then. Thanks for watching. Oh my word. So rough.